Chapter 4 It is God that justifieth. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Romans 8.33 A wonderful thing is this being justified, or made just. If we had never broken the laws of God, we should not have needed it. For we should have been just in ourselves. He who has all his life done the things which he ought to have done, and has never done anything which he ought not to have done, is justified by the law. But you, dear reader, are not of that sort. I am quite sure. You have too much honesty to pretend to be without sin, and therefore you need to be justified. Now, if you justify yourself, you will simply be a self-deceiver. Therefore, do not attempt it. It is never worthwhile. If you ask your fellow mortals to justify you, what can they do? You can make some of them speak well of you for sixpence, and others will backbite you for less than that. Their judgment is not worth much. Our text says, It is God that justifieth. And this is a deal more to the point. It is an astonishing fact, and one that we ought to consider with care. Come and see. Nobody else but God would. In the first place, nobody else but God would ever have thought of justifying those who are guilty. They have lived in open rebellion. They have done evil with both hands. They have gone from bad to worse. They have turned back to sin even after they have smarted for it and have therefore, for a while, been forced to leave it. They have broken the law and trampled on the gospel. They have refused proclamations of mercy and have persisted in ungodliness. How can they be forgiven and justified? Their fellow men, despairing of them, say, They are hopeless cases. Even Christians look upon them with sorrow rather than with hope. But not so their God. He, in the splendor of his electing grace, having chosen some of them before the foundation of the world, will not rest till he has justified them and made them to be accepted in the Beloved. Is it not written, Whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified? Romans 8.30 Thus you see there are some whom the Lord resolves to justify. Why should not you and I be of the number? None but a God would ever have thought of justifying me. I am a wonder to myself. I doubt not that grace is equally seen in others. Look at Saul of Tarsus, who foamed at the mouth against God's servants. Acts 8.3 Like a hungry wolf, he worried the lambs and the sheep right and left, and yet God struck him down on the road to Damascus. Acts 9.3-6 And changed his heart and so fully justified him that, ere long, this man became the greatest preacher of justification by faith that ever lived. He must often have marveled that ever he was justified by faith in Christ Jesus, for he was once a determined stickler for salvation by the works of the law. None but God would have ever thought of justifying such a man as Saul the persecutor, but the Lord God is glorious in grace." None but God could. But, even if anybody had thought of justifying the ungodly, none but God could have done it. It is quite impossible for any person to forgive offenses which have not been committed against himself. A person has greatly injured you. You can forgive him, and I hope you will, but no third person can forgive him apart from you. If the wrong is done to you, the pardon must come from you. If we have sinned against God, it is in God's power to forgive, for the sin is against himself. That is why David says in the 51st Psalm, Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil thing in thy sight. For then God, against whom the offense is committed, can put the offense away. That which we owe to God, our great creditor, can remit, if so it pleases him. And if he remits it, it is remitted. None but the great God against whom we have committed the sin can blot out that sin. Let us therefore see that we go to him and seek mercy at his hands. Do not let us be led aside by priests who would have us confess to them. They have no warrant in the word of God for their pretensions. 
But even if they were ordained to pronounce absolution in God's name, it must still be better to go ourselves to the great Lord through Jesus Christ the Mediator, and seek and find pardon at his hand, since we are sure that this is the right way. Proxy religion involves too great a risk. You had better see to your soul's matters yourself, and leave them in no man's hands.